to climate change is how I remember my time at teenage discourse. There's a lot of talk and very little action. <laughs> you understand climate change. You don't need me to tell you that if we continue as we are, this planet is going to hell in a handbasket. You know that. My challenge is to give you a new perspective, a new way for you to think about this current lack of action by the end of 15 minutes, a new solution to help us deal with climate change. Let's start with the root of the problem. What do you think is the biggest obstacle in the way of tackling climate change? Is it a lack of awareness? Do we need another sequel to Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth, and more scary news? Is it a lack of, lack of technologies? Do we need to wait for new nuclear, tidal energy, better batteries? Or is it a lack of resources that we simply cannot afford to transition to a low carbon economy? No, no, and no. The biggest obstacle is a conflict. A conflict between the priorities of decision makers and the nature of climate change. People's choices are dominated by the short term and their self-interest. How many politicians or business leaders look beyond four years, if that? On the other hand, climate change is all about the very long term and its effects are felt by everyone globally. These conflicting interests and timescales mean that while taking action makes sense at the global level, it does not make sense for the individual in isolation. And this is true for individual countries, individual political and business leaders, and individual consumers. But don't, <coughs> don't get me wrong. Most people want to deal with climate change. Well, everyone, almost, almost everyone wants to deal with climate change. And everyone wants others to take action. But very few can raise themselves above their own short-term interest to take the necessary action. Why is it so difficult to make the necessary change? Reducing your carbon footprint requires an immediate individual sacrifice. It means giving up something or paying more for a sustainable option, or for the benefit of others in the distant future. Taking action does not make political or economic sense for the individual decision maker. Quite simply, because positive results cannot be seen in the uh, by voters in the next election cycle. So this is the biggest obstacle. Climate action produces globally, <coughs> globally shared benefits in the long term, while individual priorities are dictated by short-term self-interest. No one, no one makes decisions for the entire globe. Taking action has to make sense at the level decisions are made. Don't take my, my word for it. Here are the words of two presidents. On the one hand, no challenge poses a greater threat to future generations than climate change. On the other hand, we all know what to do. We just don't know how to get reelected after, after we've done it. We know what to do, we don't know how to get reelected. Taking action doesn't make sense for the individual. But it would be unfair to blame only our politicians. Truth is, our entire system is driven by short term self interest. And this raises a question can we resolve this conflict? Can we make a politician? acting for the long-term climate future electable? Can short-term self-interest drive climate action? 
instead of being a drag on it? Yes, it can. Raise your hand if you have children. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. The rest of you will need to trust me. What is one of the most important parenting lessons we all learn? That praise, positive reinforcement and rewards are much more effective than punishment and negative consequences. However, we don't apply this lesson to climate negotiations. They are all about obligations and costs. Emission caps, commitments, carbon taxes. It's a negative mindset, a mindset of burden. But why not use rewards and opportunities to motivate countries to reduce emissions? Consider this plan. To start with, an annual emission benchmark is set for each country. Not binding limits, not even commitments, just benchmarks. A price for carbon saving is also established, say $50 a ton. Then, countries achieving lower actual emissions than their benchmark in any year receive a cash payment for every ton saved. Where does its money come from? An international fund is created, which borrows from private investors for the long term. It issues long-term bonds similar to so many institutions. This international fund is backed by participating countries. So the fund gets the money to repay investors from future payments of countries. These future payments are shared among countries based on a pre-agreed percentage. So to visualize it, in the first phase, investors put their money into the fund which pays countries that had cut their emissions. In the second phase, say in 10, 20 years, countries pay into the fund which repays investors. The important point to remember is that what an individual country pays into the fund in the future is not linked to what it had received from the fund. It receives based on emission performance, it pays based on a share agreed up front. Rewards, instead of negative consequences. This plan provides countries a short-term financial incentive to reduce emissions. You can think about it being similar to your insurance company offering to pay your gym membership. Of course, you know you should keep fit, right? But that incentive helps you overcome the short-term pain of going to the gym. In the end, it's a win, win, win. You're healthier, long-term healthcare costs of the insurance company are lower, and lower costs also help your wallet. So this is a plan. Let's now get to the exciting part. Let's look at some of the advantages. First, alignment with short-term self-interest. This plan separates the financial costs from taking action. Whether it's the UK or another country reducing emissions by the same amount, the future costs of countries will be unchanged. However, short-term payment goes to countries that reduce emissions. Result? Incentives are transformed from free riding on others' efforts into maximizing gains from this fund. If the price for carbon saving is set at $50, as an example, every emission reduction a country can achieve at a cost below $50 gives it an immediate profit. Today, climate efforts are characterized by an individual cost and a shared benefit. This is turned on its head and it becomes an individual benefit and a shared cost. In other words, the decision maker is now motivated to take action. It's in his or her interest to do so. What about the short-term pain? Borrowing by the fund pushes the financial burden into the future. 
<coughs> result, the costs and the benefits of taking action are more closely aligned in time, both arising in the future. The prospect for action now improves because from the decision maker's perspective, a shorter uh, cost has been replaced by a short-term benefit. Yes, this means leaving a financial debt to the future. However, that is much better than the current situation of leaving future generations a shattered planet. There is no doubt that the sooner we act, the lower the costs and the lower the risks of climate change. Second, capital to finance the transition. Substantially reducing the carbon footprint of our economy will be a major transition. It will require significant investment. It will produce winners and losers, whichever way we do it. Result, the capital raised by the fund and distributed to countries will help finance this transition in addition to fixing incentives. Third, political will. Governments will become wholehearted supporters of radical change thanks to the short-term financial incentive instead of facing only short-term costs. The money they receive from the fund can be used to secure the political and public support for the necessary action. Result? much stronger and sustained political commitment. This is critical. Political will has been a major bottleneck. And governments have many, many tools to direct emissions, such as energy policy, tax policy, regulation, subsidies, and so forth. So, harnessing short-term self-interest providing the capital needed for the transition, and strengthening political will. Three hugely powerful advantages, which add up to a dramatic boost to climate action. Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's business partner, once said, show me the incentive and I will show you the outcome. Climate action will happen if, and only if, it makes sense for the individual decision maker. Precisely what this plan delivers. So why hasn't this been done yet? Well, think rolling suitcases. We had the technology of the wheel for over 5,000 years. We know it makes the transportation of most things much easier. When did we first put wheels on suitcases? In the 1970s, after we landed man on the moon. <laughs> Quite incredible, huh? If we wait that long with saving our planet, it will be too late. So let's get these money wheels on this climate change suitcase as quickly as possible. This climate idea and the initiative behind it is at an early stage, but it's gaining momentum and the support of organizations with climate finance experience and credibility. We are also working on a very exciting pilot scheme. This plan I presented doesn't solve all climate problems. However, because it deals with that fundamental conflict, the biggest obstacle, it makes overcoming our challenges much easier. It has the potential to be a game changer. It changes, well, it changes everything. Imagine if short-term self-interest was a driver of rapid change and not a hurdle to it. Imagine if every decision maker saw climate action as an opportunity and not a burden. Imagine if taking action made sense not only at the global level, but also for every individual. I hope you agree this is an idea worth sharing. Thank you.